Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of This Is Your Captain Speaking. Uh, today I have on Martin Cox, who's the uh, Strategic Development and PR Director at Copestone. Um, from Martin's perspective, he's uh, very much focused on long-term repeatable marketing strategy, which is uh, much better than the, than, the, uh, than the opposite to that, which is very quick wins and stuff that doesn't really last very long. So excited to hear about what you would do from a long-term perspective, Martin. Um, and also he's been focused on everything from marketing consultancy gigs to lecturing uh, at different universities. Actually, seen a couple of universities like across Europe, but also in, in the Middle East as well, which is interesting. I'd like to get into that a little bit. And then also a number of full time and interim head of marketing gigs as well. So coming at us with quite a bit of experience, Martin. So welcome today. Thank you. Thanks for having me along. I'm excited to be here. Good. So tell, Good. Well, let's start off a little bit with your lecturing side of things. So you lectured over in Dubai and also over in, in the UK, right? And that's a bit, probably a bit of a stretch to say I lectured in Dubai. Uh, the pandemic has obviously made the world a lot closer. So when I say Dubai, what it actually means is I probably teach from my son's bedroom uh, at five o'clock in the morning on a Friday. Uh, yeah, it's it's really actually, it's a really exciting role to have because it's a, so different culturally to teach with students who essentially don't even want to be there at times. But yeah, it's, it's a really fun gig to have. And yeah, it just helps me to understand the world a little bit better. Got it, got it. And so what, what are you teaching? So it can be anything from a basic marketing course right through to the MBA marketing. And that is, yeah, it's a huge wealth of experience you see there right from an 18 year old who's never had a job through to, I think one of the last cohorts I taught on had the CEO of one of the big pharma companies based out of Dubai. So it's just a massive variance. It's really, really exciting. It's a great challenge to be tested by your students at the same time. Yeah, I was just about to say, I said, that's a challenge, all right. When you get, mm -hmm. <laughs> and knowing the audience is a little bit tricky, right? So, uh, yeah. yeah. And you will have one of my favorite little tricks we play, um, which they don't appreciate so much, is at the end of a course, the end of a class, I leave the camera on and the, the uh, session rolling and come back half an hour later to see who is still actually there. Because sometimes you might be teaching a screen, a, a bank of 25 blank screens on Zoom. So who's still logged in 25 minutes after the class is over? And yeah, it's, it's an interesting one when you see that half of your class are gonna be uh, accessing your course in their own time rather than live. And I think that really fits in with how we consume nowadays, you know, from our days at university, maybe 20 years ago, where it was absolutely had to be there and then as an appointment. Now these, these kids essentially are consuming at their own timescale. And it makes it a very different experience to teach when you've got an empty room. Does it make it, is it, is it just different or is it easier or harder or, or oh, how it's is much, it? <clears throat> it's much harder. Uh, you essentially get no feedback whatsoever because all you have is black screens. So it's, it's one of my roles I try to do is to get these kids to engage more because they will gain more value from it. Ultimately, they're spending $20,000 a year to attend the university. So the more value they can get from that experience, the better. And ultimately, from my own point of view, I only need one person on camera to know whether I'm boring them or not. And I just use that one person's reactions as a bellwether for everything else. And if I see that he or she is bored, I will just kind of flip it around a bit to keep it a bit more exciting. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, I mean, it's the same goes with um, with webinars, for example. I mean, mm -hmm. like during the pandemic, you know, we've we've been having to do a lot of webinars, and I, I did a lot. And uh, I found if you have a particularly engaged audience and they're chatting away in the in in the in the chat window, you can they'll typically tell you this is boring. Or just, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is good sort of feedback but yeah. if you're on a webinar but you don't get feedback you're like uh is this actually going okay or not which is absolutely which is yeah. challenging yeah as and opposed to being in front of crucial. people yeah yeah for that sure. feedback is absolutely crucial for sure okay well look let's take a look at what you what you're doing at copestone at the moment give us a little bit of background on copestone and what you guys do yeah so we are a, a 20 year old content marketing agency we are a very traditional kind of conservative writing house essentially that's where we've been for the last 19 years or so uh, we have got some longer term strategic clients uh, based around europe where we deal a lot with the construction sectors uh, we deal a lot in exec recruitment so we have these 
these silos of knowledge, which are really interesting and really useful to have, but we're just, we've been about focused on writing content. So we've been doing SEO and content creation before it was, you know, before it was popular, essentially. What we're doing now is we're moving a lot further away from short term tactical pieces of work. And we, we've never advertised because every single day we get a lead in from our website. <clears throat> you know, we're, we're SEO specialists. It's what we do. So it, it fits that we get these leads coming in every day, um, which is makes makes life a lot easier. But what we've moved to do now is look for longer term strategic wins. So 12, 24 month writing contracts and providing strategic assistance to large businesses over that, yeah, over that two year period, if we can. Okay, got it. So, so from your personal perspective, then does content, is content a thing that makes you tick as a marketer? I, I realized that I've been doing content for about 15 years. Uh, ever since I started cycling or ever since I started going on social media, it, it was just really about, without realizing it, it's about creating content. It's about creating the pieces of material which are going to engage whoever your audience may be. Uh, I spent some time trying to be a professional cyclist um, and it was not a, not a good financial time, I'll be honest. But what it was, was about creating content for brands that would pay the bills. And it's, you know, it's been a fun and challenging time, but you learn so much about what resonates with, with your customers and with your potential audience. And then you see as well, you know, ultimately as a, as a dad now, I'm seeing content from my kids' perspective and what is engaging with them. So what, what I loved writing long form articles. That was my thing as a blogger. My kids have got an attention span of about 20 seconds. So TikTok, as a, as a prime example, I put it on my phone. I deleted it out 20 minutes later because I could see just how quickly I was being sucked in on this content. So content creation is, yeah, it's, it's a blast because there is so much scope and so much variety you can do. Uh, right now, we are doing CSR work for a global bank. We are doing internal marketing for a recruitment firm. You know, and it's such a wide variety. It's fascinating work. Oh, for sure. I think content is uh, is at the heart of all marketing, right? So, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's not something that all marketers are particularly good at. Like it's uh, and it it requires you to have a bit of bit of you need to be brave sometimes if you're putting because you're putting yourself out there. If you create mm -hmm. your own content, as you said, like um, active on on social media, for example, TikToks, LinkedIn is somewhere that I'm particularly active on. Mm -hmm. But it means that I need to step outside my comfort zone sometimes and just post stuff out to the world and sort of go, okay, there you go. You know, so I see I see content broken up into into a couple of different areas, but two major areas for marketing is that you look at it, the creation side mm -hmm. and then also the distribution side. So you can create world-class content, but if nobody sees it, then what's the point? Absolutely. So you're from your background like how do you manage to merge both of those things together how do you how do you plan it like how do you structure it like are you saying first what your distribution is going to be what your distribution strategy is going to be and then create the content for that or you create the content and be like okay how can i get this out to the world how are you <coughs> so from a personal perspective it's about create it and they'll come um ultimately if you're creating really good stuff and it doesn't really matter what the format is. It will be picked up. More people will see it. I uh, was talking to a client a couple of weeks back about podcasting. And one of the challenges they were having is for the first six months, their podcast was getting five views, 10 views, 20 views. And then at one moment, it got picked up. Someone saw it, shared it, went a bit more viral. And within two, three more months from there, they were getting thousands of views, two, three to 4,000 views. So it's, it's about that consistency you've got to keep on doing. I think most, you know, most creators give up far too easily. Um, they're expecting to see bigger results, but you're absolutely right. I've seen blogs which have been produced for three years, which are getting five views. Because ultimately you have to marry the two up. You've got to create stuff which is good. Uh, and hopefully as you're, as you're writing or as you're creating your style is getting more refined your abilities are getting better i look back at original blogs that i wrote a decade ago and i hang my head in shame just how awful they were but 
they're still getting 150 views a day. You know, they're still out there and it's, you know, you, you put it out there and you've got to learn from it and you've got to keep on putting it out there. Um, from a personal perspective, it's about, I guess, trial and error. It's about refinement. It's about not waiting for it to be absolutely perfect. Now, you can just refine, refine, and refine until all of a sudden you've missed your window. Um, so it's about making sure that you get your product out there. Um, again, this goes back to something that I did talk about with my kids. They want to be professional gamers. They want to, well, the youngest kid wants to be a professional gamer. He wants to get all this content out, but he's never produced a single piece because he's never got round to making it perfect. And he's, we were just simply talking about how easy it is to go out and put yourself out there, go out and press the record button, speak to the camera, say your piece, push upload. And that's it. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you get, the better you'll become with it eventually. So, yeah, it's, it's can't, can't fall the apples and all that gubbins. You've got to do the content. And if it's working, you've got to then think about how do we get it out there uh, and how do we distribute it afterwards? Because otherwise, like you say, it's a waste to have five years worth of work only getting 20 views each time. Yeah, it's also, I, I, I think it's... Um... The, the creating the content itself, you mentioned something good there around having a perfect or not. And I find with a lot of marketing teams that I work with, mm -hmm. they don't want to push anything out into the world until it's until it's at that level of perfection. And it's typically because of the management of an organization that are mm -hmm. pushing that. So if a marketing team is working on an ebook, for example, the CEO wants to be involved and see what's written in the ebook. And also every article needs to be proofed by mm -hmm. somebody in the C level and said, why didn't you say this sentence like that or that sentence like this? Stuff that really doesn't matter. Yeah, right? absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like we've worked in exactly the same company before. <laughs> uh, I've seen a Christmas letter, a Christmas card, be copywritten to death for seven weeks with four lines of text on it. And I've never witnessed that level of micromanagement in my, in my entire life. It was absurd. But, you know, it went out eventually. But it took the best part of two months literally tens of thousands of pounds of resources to go into writing a Christmas card yeah. and there were, where was the personality in it where was the actual joy in the fact it's a Christmas card it wasn't it had been edited and just managed out of existence sometimes you just got to get it done and as they don't I don't do much writing in my role because thankfully it's not my thing but when I do write a blog I give it to one of our editors and it's such a learning experience to have a professional editor check out your writing. And I swear there's, there's more purple pen on that blog than there is actual black ink at the end of it. But each, each comment is something where I can learn from. I don't necessarily take everything into it because ultimately I still have to have my own style or I still, or my clients, they all have to have their own style at the end of it. But you certainly you need to have some level of that, some level of editing to make sure it's consistent and it's on you know, brand guidelines, for example. But yeah, absolutely. You, you've just got to get it out. You don't waste too much time. Otherwise, you've missed your, your moment. Sometimes you only get a 30 minute window to post that piece of content. After that time, the news story has gone on. The zeitgeist has changed. Exactly. And it's, it's actually, so in your case, like you, you miss Christmas, you know, the Christmas card. <laughs> that, that's the thing. But you also mentioned it's, it's, it's actually important to say like by so many people getting involved in that, having so many cooks in the kitchen with that specific mm -hmm. piece, you're talking about 15,000 euro or, do, or yeah. dollar or pound investment just based on the time that people are mm -hmm. spending to write four lines of text, yeah, which is wild wild amount of mm -hmm. cash to be spending on just putting a christmas card together you'd never pay yeah. somebody to do that for you right mm -hmm. absolutely so so yeah that's typically it's, one of the things that i see is the senior leadership getting involved changing around what's being said and just like getting too heavily involved which stops stuff actually being pushed mm -hmm. out the door right yeah absolutely it's it's bonkers it's absolutely wild when you see this in action and you're standing at the other side of the room and all you can think about is what a waste of resources we could be doing something valuable with this you could just go to your local nice card shop and buy a card 
you know, and physically write a message in there by hand, and it would still be less labor intensive than getting six members of staff to write these four lines. For sure, for sure. I mean, there's something else that you mentioned there before that resonated with me a bit as well as consistency. So, um, and I think this sort of plays back into the senior leadership thing getting involved as well is that, mm-hmm. why hasn't that last video, that one video that we did or that podcast that we did one episode of, why isn't that viral? Why aren't we getting 100,000 views a week? Why mm-hmm. isn't this, you know, and and the problem is that there's no patience anymore. Like you mm-hmm. mentioned the start of TikTok, right? TikTok, I don't know how long a TikTok video is, less than 30 seconds though, and that move on to the next one, next one, next one. Mm-hmm. It's how we are. We've brought that into the business world as well, right? Mm-hmm. And it just, it, it, it sort of, it, it, it rolls downhill to people in marketing teams to be like, unless the thing that you're doing is going to show immediate success, then it's not a success, right? Yeah. So tell me a little bit about consistency and how you see the world. Like, do you see it just tapping away, keep tapping away at the same thing and it will stick at some point? I don't know if tapping away at the same thing is the right thing, but we certainly, I'm, I'm just thinking about a client we were working with um, at the moment. They're a big manufacturer. And we were looking at their uh, insights from Data Studio yesterday from Google. And it was the most fascinating longitudinal look at their web traffic over the course of two years. And you can see consistently from the moment we started, there's a gentle uptick in traffic. Month by month, it goes up. And then there is a, we're not quite sure what happened, but there's this one moment where we, the website lost 80% of their traffic overnight, literally gone. Uh, and we spent a long time just trying to figure out what was happening here. And it turns out a competitor had written a blog which just nabbed the keywords. And it just took our ranking from one to two, uh, literally overnight. Um, And we spent two months recreating the blog to take back that top spot. So you look at this longitudinal and it goes up and up and then it plummets down, goes along and then straight back up again once we retook it. Um, So yeah, chipping away and just making sure that the work you're doing is hitting the right notes is so key. Um, But yeah, it's about consistency you've got to stay active with google they need to know that you're a real business you're you're doing your thing but for us it's about making sure that we're aligned with what our customers are looking for not just you know standard this is what we want to put in but what are our customers actually looking for what are we what are our clients customers looking for what are the problems that they're trying to solve and then how do we create that content which solves their problems that's interesting and i want to talk about this just quickly just i see a lot of companies chasing google or going after the the google low-hanging fruit rather than going after the client's needs or problems right and and writing content which is pleasing to google but not necessarily solving any or adding value yeah to their prospects or adding mm-hmm. value to people that they want to be having a conversation with how do you mix? Like, how do you how do you navigate that? So, it it's got to work for Google, and this is where talented copywriters come in. And I think this is what sets a copywriter apart from someone who just mem- a copywriter from me. I can write a blog, and it'll be okay. But one of our team members, the copy, they will write something which is not just technically spot on from a Google perspective, but actually is exactly what people want to read and will engage with. And that really has got to be the key. Um, We've been talking a lot in the office about AI and AI will write decent copy. For most businesses, it will write better than the average person. And that's great, but does it affect us as a copywriting agency? Well, actually no, because that technical ability to weave the creative with the technical requirements that's what sets us apart uh, and that's what is really the, the key skill here is understanding what works from a reader's perspective but also fits what google is looking for so it's and about hiring that right person martin right and getting that absolutely. copywriter mm-hmm. yeah well, i mean we have a distributed team of probably about 70 copywriters globally and they have got between them somewhere in the region about 30 phds and you, because sometimes you just need a technical level of ability, which is defies belief. 
again, a different one of our clients. They, they, they produce something which I cannot and do not understand what it is that they make. That there are only probably half a dozen writers on the planet who could write the blogs that need to be written at that technical level. And thankfully, we've got two of them. Um, it's about really making sure that it engages and resonates with your customers or rather your clients, potential customers. That's perfect. Okay, well, look, I think, I think we can leave it on that point. I think it's about working with, working with a company that has the right uh, or working with the who, let's say, the, the writers to make mm-hmm. sure that they're able to mix both sides of the world there to make sure that they're resonating both with Google and also with, uh, with your audience. So, yes. So, Martin, where can people find you? They're looking for you. Uh, we are at Copestone, copestone.uk.com. Uh, we do not have a pretty website. I'm not going to lie. Uh, this is this is one of those things where if you work with a copywriting agency, sometimes we neglect our own work. Uh, yeah, that's that's us. We've been I say we've been around for about 20 years in total. We've got a nice little client base. I think our project numbers are into the 20 25 thousands now over the over the years. And it's yeah, it's a it's a good agency. It's one I really enjoy working with because it's about making sure that our clients are ultimately achieving their aims. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Martin, thank you so much for your time today, mate. I really appreciate thank it. You, and uh, guys, it's been another episode of This Is Your Captain Speaking. Uh, looking forward to seeing you all again next week. Martin, thanks again. Thanks, Andy. Take care.